Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are again, and when we feel like it o'clock. I, uh, I'm excited to have him back. We did one episode already, and this is going to be a regular occurrence, I'm pretty sure. It's Joseph Borek from Flyers Nitty Gritty, finest podcast in the land, for certainly Flyers podcast, I'll tell you that right now, and one of the finest writers you're going to find. Um, he is a wealth of NHL knowledge, I'm sure he's a big Philadelphia fan, but we're going to go into some other teams today. Uh, one in particular that we're going to talk about, just because it's so exciting to see what the Ottawa Senators might do with their two picks here in the draft. And that's kind of a big thing coming up right now. Everybody's Everybody in the land is interested in what's going to happen with that. So we're going to talk about Ottawa. We're going to talk about a bunch of things uh, today that I'm sure you're going to be fascinated with. And thanks for joining us today. Uh, make sure you're hitting that subscribe and the bell and getting this out to the to the masses and put your comments down in the comment section if there's anything you disagree with agree with or would like us to talk more about you let us know so joseph thanks for coming back my friend it's great to have you yeah thank you i i love being here it was a joy the last time i love talking all things hockey all day any day and then obviously talking about the senators is huge in this draft because even though they weren't awarded the first overall pick, this is a mighty deep draft, and having the third and fifth overall pick, and depending on what the Isles do, a pick in the 20s uh, is very nice for them in the to have as a uh, fallback option, of course. Yeah, um, there's been lots of talk, actually, about what Ottawa is going to do here and what they may attempt to do. I've heard some talk about them... Uh, possibly using those two picks or maybe even all three to try to scoop the number one pick from whoever. We don't know who that's going to be yet. And that's kind of what's exciting about this draft, uh, who that's going to be yet from them. And it got me to wondering, would I even want to do that? Um, that Lafreniere is a fantastic talent, but this is such a deep draft that well, it's one of the few times I may come and haul whether I want, even wanted to do that this year. Uh, they're looking at some of the guys that they could have and some of the comparisons I've heard by really fine scouting, including Bob McKenzie. I'm not sure I want to, I want to do that. What do, you, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, personally, I don't think it's a good idea because if you end up getting anybody like from a Stutzel to some mocks I've looked at, had a Stutzel to a Raymond because then you're getting a great winger combined with uh, who you would think you really kind of get two wingers at that point, but you would hope maybe Stutzel could move to center. So that one might not make the most sense in team dynamics, but it would make sense in getting your offense to be fantastic. Um, other ones I've seen, which kind of go to what I was saying before this are getting a defenseman combined with a forward and whether for some reason LA doesn't pick byfield. They then get him, and then it would be Drysdale. Something along those lines kind of have been all the mocks. Or if um, Detroit doesn't pick Pierfetti, they had them in some picking Drysdale at three and Pierfetti at um, five. So it's it's all interesting, everything you look at. And it's really, with any of those players I mentioned, and also thrown in there, Alexander Holtz, who's a player out of Sweden, I also love. You can't go wrong with any of those guys, really. You have all these great players. You also said Rossi before the pocket. None of these guys you can go wrong with, and none of those guys would really be drafting up. You would only be drafting up if you started going to the names of Dawson Mercer, Jack Quinn, Jake Sanderson. So as long as you pick in the realms of the names I first mentioned, you're, you're right there, and you have great two players, potentially. I don't see any reason why you should just want to trade for one because we both know Ottawa doesn't just need one guy to fix their issues. They need a couple guys to get it going there. Which, which leads to the possibility or the thought that if you had the number one, would you take if Ottawa was offering the three and the five and give up a, you know, possible superstar like uh, Lafreniere. And I almost think I would because at three, let's say L.A. takes Quinn Byfield, and I think that's quite likely going to be the case going by their draft history and who they pick, the kind of players they generally like. 
In fact, I he's been compared. I compared him to Kopitar, and so did Bobby Kenzie. So, um, then you've got Stutzla, who Bob McKenzie and their staff compared him to Patrick Kane. Now yeah. that's in style. I don't think they're saying that Stutzla is for sure a Patrick Kane or whatever the case may be. But if he's ninety percent Patrick Kane. <laughs> You know, even and, 80 percent Patrick Kane, you're still yeah. having a hell of a player. Like, and then <laughs> and then, uh, like you mentioned, that Detroit's looking. I've heard several account. Perfetti is their guy. That's what I'm hearing. Same here. Yeah. So if Perfetti is their guy and you can get Jamie Drysdale. This guy, his upside, maybe as much as Laf- Lafreniere, really. I mean. The thing, the reason why Lafreniere gets to number one is his upside is huge, but his going to play in the NHL and be a star is a higher percentage than any other guy on the any other guy there because of the size, uh, skating ability, and all that. It's almost for sure Lafreniere is going to be a, Lafreniere is going to be a star. Drysdale. Drysdale his window is a little different, but I personally think I, I can't see this kid not being a star defenseman in the league. I really cannot see a, 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 that the, it, it not being that case, the case. I, I really love the kid. And uh, so what would you say? You're taking Drysdale and uh, Stutzla. That's, that would probably be my picks because I don't think – Byfield's going to fall. I think the Kings, like you said, are going to pick him. Obviously, if the King picks Stutzla, uh, then you're going to take Quinn Byfield. That just fell into your lap. So, And then you have your great center that you have that's going to become your first-line guy. Norris probably slots in your second-line guy. And like I was saying before the podcast, you then have a very – you went from not having the best center court to having a very solid center court. But that's probably not going to happen. So the likelihood is – I agree with where most people have stood, so I think he's going to end up being your left or right winger compared to center, but he's going to be great at that position. So third is a good pick for him, and fifth is a perfect pick for Drysdale because I like what you said about Lafreniere, how good of a chance Lafreniere has to be a dynamic playmaker on the wing as well as Stutz has a chance to be that dynamic playmaker on the wing. That's as high of a chance. Drysdale has to be that as a defenseman. He's such a good defenseman. Uh, like you said, Zuboff, you said people compared him to before. You heard, uh, obviously, Lindstrom's left-handed, but like the style-wise he plays and how talented he is and how good people think he'll be right away, that's why people mentioned that name, plus because there's some, there was some talk off the bat of him going to the Red Wings, so that name got thrown out there for that reason as well, because of the Red Wings connection, but that would be the two perfect picks for me, Stutzla and Drysdale, because you're not necessarily getting the center, but maybe at 21, I believe it would be, if the Islanders fall out, um, somewhere around there the pick would be, you could end up getting a center then, because like we said, this draft is deep. This is a very deep draft, and yeah, uh, yeah you could definitely do that, or, I mean, they've got the cap space to keep their eye out for centers for a while, because they're not really going to be uh, it's still like another two years at least before I would think possibly not another two years at least before they're really looking at being a playoff team so they could look out there for center centers are hard to find and, and I get the uh, I get the logic there's a lot of people have them picking Rossi there because he's such a dynamic centerman um, but he's fairly small he's kind of like point he doesn't play small at all um, I, I get it. I get it. If even if they pick him, I get it. But I see this Drysdale could be like Quinn Quinn Hughes and uh, Makar. He 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 reminds me of, like watching them. He looks the same talent as them. And I you've agree. got Thomas Shabbat, Eric Branstrom, uh, Nikita Zaitsev, who would probably uh, play. Uh, he he plays right defense Zaitsev. So. You're you're looking. You're right. Their right side is kind of full, but there's something about having guys with the talent of Drysdale and Shabbat on a team 
on the defense. Not too many teams have that. Uh, I, I'm trying to think, and I'd have to look here to think of a team that nowadays that has two defensemen with that kind of talent on their team. Um, it is a it is a, a strength in this NHL that is ne- very hard to find. And with the parity, I, I think, in the league right now, having gu- a, a one-gun like Pittsburgh has Malkin and uh, Crosby, that yeah. is a huge weapon to have up the middle like that. The most important defense and center and goal are the three most important positions, wingers, you fill them in the best you can, but especially puck moving defensemen. That's a weapon that other teams have a hard time defending. And I think this type of weapon would be something that other teams, not too many have. I don't know if anybody really has it, except for maybe Tampa Bay with Hedman and uh, now, uh, uh, why is his name leaving me here? I'll tell you in a second. Sergeyev. Oh, Sergeyev, yeah. Yeah. But not too many yeah, teams have that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the problem with Sergachev is how they're going to pay him. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk about that some yeah, other time. That's, 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 a, a, that's a huge situation. Yeah. But, yeah, he's great. Um, I was going to say, though, I think, like I said, deep in the draft, you got guys. I know Jamie Bascal of the Flyers, Andy Gritty, with us, talked about it for us potentially. But if Jakob Perot falls to them. He can play some center. He's got a great shot. Hendricks LaPerriere uh, gets injured, but if he's healthy, uh, by most accounts, and you read everything, he's a steal waiting to happen. I'm taking he's got a, a chance great on left him. Hand. Sure yeah, that. he's got a great left-handed shot with one of the best uh, smart, witty guys in the draft, and he's a great playmaker. He, he's a guy I would definitely take if you get that 20-something pick, and he's there. Or Perot, because Perot's going to be a guy. Again, though, his question is, I don't know if we stay at center, but I think he can, and he can be a goal scoring center if he can stay at center. So that also will help you in that Ottawa dynamics if he's able to play at center. But even if he can play the wing, he'll become another great pick for you. Then you just have to find center uh, somewhere else, and that'll that'll just become a problem down the line. You still have great offense on the outside. Yeah, once you get down there, you're kind of looking at the best. Uh... I'm looking at like Tankathon right now, and believe it or not, they have Yuroslav Askarov at 24. Now, if like I don't care if I'm looking for a center or not, if I'm at that spot and Askarov is there, I'm all over that. Uh, yeah, but anyways, I just thought I'd bring that up. That that's crazy that he's that low. That that would be insane. No, that's uh, really nice. another guy would be Maverick Bork. Yeah. Uh, Perfect if he happened to be there. But I, I think Jacob Perot is going to be gone earlier than that. Uh, I think people have caught up to the fact that this kid is going to be something else. And uh, I, I don't think you're going to see Jacob Bork there. Or, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think you're going to see Jacob Perot there in the, in the 20s. I, I just doubt it very much. I I'd agree. Be, I'd be doing backflips if I was Philadelphia or Ottawa or anybody there where he's still there at that time, that would be fantastic, but I don't see it. No, I, I, don't. I was just, I'm also hoping for uh, the sake, like you said, for the team I like to, and then uh, I'm going to mispronounce his name um, a little bit, but a guy that I saw a highlight reel of about three days ago, um, Missick, I think, Jan Missick, the center from oh. Hamilton. Uh, yeah, Misak. Yeah, he's a left winger actually. Oh, okay. He plays a wing winger. because when I looked on uh, um, NHLDraft.com, my NHLDraft.com is still had him listed as a center. But uh, yeah. but what I was saying was, uh, he was a guy when I looked at the um, video, you could see how good he was at finishing and kind of figuring out, like we say about a lot of the higher draft picks, when to read a play in like a snap. Like, okay, passing's great here, or, oh, no, I got to take my shot, and I have a great shot, and I got to, and I know how to aim it, so let me use it. So, like, he seems to be a guy that could become a steal somewhere down in the 20s, and I know he's a guy that, Mislick's a guy that, uh, 
the Flyers also potentially have going to, and I would be elated if he's a guy that dropped to us. We don't necessarily need forward, but he would be the best guy on the board potentially at that time. So he would be a guy who would perfectly be uh, happy with, with us. But I think they would love him too because he can be a dynamic player for your offense. And a, again, that would be hitting, in my opinion, three guys in the first round, which like we said, in the, uh, we talked before the podcast, that's like unheard of to potentially hit on three guys that become big parts of your building blocks of your future team in the first round. If there's a draft to do it, this would be one of them. And if there's a team to do it, Ottawa would could likely be the be that team because they are very good at drafting and developing their players. And that's the big part. It's the development part. Another guy I like to throw in there that some people have in the second round. By the way, Mishak, I've seen him as high as 15. I've seen him out of the first round. People have them all over the place. That's how a lot of guys at the bottom of the first round or in this draft. I don't know if you agree with that, but don't you see that with some guys when you look at different mocks? Uh, yeah, I mean, but, this draft more than any because there's so much competition in this draft. There is really a lot of talent in this draft. So it's really hard to put where you want to put every single one. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult. And for me, I wish... I would love to be able to just be able to meet some of these guys and see them and get a feel for their personalities and all that kind of stuff like that. And that's all part of it too. But from what I understand in this draft, the talent level is so similar, even up into to 31, like between 15 and 31, there's just a lot of talent there. It's almost like people are saying you can't really go wrong. It's just on the field for your team and who they think is going to, you know, be that right fit for whatever reasons, for many of the many reasons. The guy that I like that uh, is, uh, is safe, it's probably a safe pick, is uh, Lucas Reichel uh, from Germany. Uh, he can play all three positions. He's extremely good defensively. His offensive upside is questionable, but... He could be your se- he could be a second third line tweener type guy. Um, if you're looking for a safe pick in that, it's the reason why he might go down to the second round because if there's a lot of teams that want to just go for the go for scoring or a specific thing and they're willing to take more of a risk rather than the safe pick, he could fall. But um, I personally would take him. I like his uh, from what I've read about him. His attitude is fantastic. He's just a coach's dream. And those are great guys to have, right? So, and he can play He can play all three positions. It sounds like an Ottawa pick. That's true. Another guy that I know, talking about guys that I've seen all over the place, I've seen this guy beginning second, up around the beginning of 20, up around the end of the first round. But Tyson Forster's a pretty good guy that, is on the wing, but has played center at times in his career too. So maybe some versatility you can have there as well. He's more gifted for his goal scoring ability than, uh, but he's a guy that has a rocket of a shot, but he has size. He's six one. So you figure when he grows into his body, he probably could become with their staff better at defense too. I don't think he's going to be a guy that's a joke on the defensive end. I think he's going to be a guy that's, good enough on his end, and then a guy that has a potential with that laser he has on the offensive end to just be that effective for you. So I think that's a guy, he goes all over on different mocks I look at, but that's a different guy that I would have interest in if I were them potentially at that pick. Yeah, the reason why he's a little lower in the first round, because if you look at his numbers and his size and you say, how come this guy's going uh, on the lower side here? It's he, he's old, he's an older. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's 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 eighteen and a half, pushing almost getting you know almost at the edge of that, and that's big. Uh, uh, there's a lot a lot of guys that are higher like that are like we're, when we were talking about like Lucas Raymond is a, was playing a seventeen year old kid that's playing in uh, the Swedish elite league, getting thirteen points. That is unheard of. Unheard yeah. of. You know, and Colts is doing well too in uh, Sweden. So. Colts, yeah, there's a good one. There's another good one. He, again, he's he's in in the eighteen and a half area, yeah. though, but it doesn't really matter because that guy's shot is what. 
he's got a shot you're like uh lion it kind of yeah. reminds me of lion it or know? kessel but he's not a lazy player that's, that's the guy a, i picked yeah. as kessel as yeah. his most uh most likely like i think bob mckenzie said forsberg out of nashville reminds him a lot of that that's another good one that's yeah that one. was that's a really good one i had him as like a kessel i don't Kessel's not lazy on the ice. He's lazy off the ice, which is going <laughs> to lessen, which is going to lessen his career in the long run. Uh, which is the reason why Arizona uh, it was a bad move. He, he's going nowhere but downhill from this, from the end, this till the end of his career. We'll, and uh, it's, it, I don't, I think it's going to be an ugly fall too, because Kessel doesn't like to be told what to do. So, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, that's going to be an ugly fall. That we could get into that conversation sometime too about Phil Kessel. My gosh, the Toronto Maple Leafs made him a captain. Anyways, yeah, um, by that. there's a guy that since we're talking about the draft and what Ottawa might do, there is a guy who I'm a little bit possible as a pick that they might pick if Drysdale was gone. Say, let's say Detroit took Drysdale. Okay, Lucas Raymond would be the thought of the pick. But for some reason, I have a feeling somebody's going to reach for Dawson Mercer. I just I just have a feeling that somebody's going to reach for him. The only thing is he's he's at the end of the 18 years old, too. Right. But he came up through. He came up so fast. He's almost like he kind of late bloomed and turned. He matured like really, really fast. He went from sort of an immature guy to a mature guy and decided, I'm going to focus on this. And he started rising up so fast. I I think it's possible. But the thing is, he's a winger. So yeah. it's possible that he doesn't. But it wouldn't be surprise me, surprising to me that a, like Anaheim, New Jersey, or Buffalo after him takes Dawson Mercer higher than a lot of people expect. Yeah, I know Jersey, a couple um, things I've seen, also had them picking Jack Quinn a yeah. little bit up because that wouldn't be reaching that much at seven. So a little bit above where he's mostly projected. So uh, they've had him uh, going to uh, there as well. But that one uh, mock, at the bottom of the first round, especially for a team like Ottawa, if Askarov somehow keeps falling and falling and falling, that's going to get pretty interesting in the 20s because I think you're going to have to pick him because you need goaltending too. So if you can get those great guys for your offense and defense at three and five, why the heck not get your great franchise goaltender if he somehow falls down to that pick in the 20s? Do you imagine how ridiculous that will be getting oh. your offensive guy, getting your defensive guy, and getting your – franchise goaltender who like Hart was compared to Price uh j this guy is also compared to Carey Price. like he's a guy that you just know he, he has the he just knows that he's fundamentally sound net at such a young age he's so good on the in terms of on the corners reading the plays he can see around the screens great already like the kid's somebody that looks like he's already a veteran <laughs> at, at such a young age. He's a oh. he would be ridiculous at that pick. I'm I don't know how you he'd buddy. fall there, but that would be ridiculous. I'm telling you, buddy. Like I've thought about this quite a bit, and I, I would. It's it's so hard not to take this guy even up in the top five, to because having having that kind of a goaltender can save your franchise. It can mm -hmm. completely save your franchise. If Ottawa took him at number five, I wouldn't be going. I wouldn't be going. No, I'd be going. I can totally get that. I totally get that. Like anybody that picks Askarov, I I totally understand why they would do that at that place. The thing is, the whole stigma is, is that goaltenders are easier to find, and that's true. But goaltenders like that are not easy to find. Or not? Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and the value of a goaltender like that is insane. Like, you could say whatever you want. Carey Price's numbers don't look great right now, but that is more of a product of the team in front of them. That Montreal would not even be – it's actually almost bad for them to have Carey Price right now because it doesn't expose how bad that lineup is. 
That lineup is not yeah, I good. Agree. Okay. And Carey Price is propping that team up. And it's unfortunate because Carey Price is keeping that management there that doesn't shouldn't be there. And uh, it's too bad. And I really hope that somebody shakes their head and lets him go and be win a cup somewhere or something down the road or go to Seattle or whatever and, and whatever. But that's another thing altogether. That team that's, can save that team can save a that player can save a franchise. Yeah. I wanted to um because I remember reading a great quote about it. And I wanted to pull it up so I wasn't just paraphrasing. And I found it. Um, it was from Ryan Kennedy of the Hockey News on um, on um, as he said, he said out has the has chance, has chance to be the best, be the best goalie best of the generation. generation. A world junior starter at 17, he did have his ups and downs in Ostrava, but scouts still see a total package netminder with a number with a number one potential, of course. So he's, he's he yeah, could be a generation generational guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why. I thought that quote was a great quote, or quote um, putting in the total package of what he could be because you're seeing the most technically sound goaltender you've seen in a while. And coming from Russia, you see those goalies, like kind of like Bob and others, when I wrote an article about goaltending for the pub sports I write for, just anticipate. They're almost like soccer goalies. They like just know where it's going, and it's like, and then they just jump before you're like, how the heck did he even know that was going to happen? Like, he's yeah. one of those goalies, like Vasilevsky, like Bob, that just are exactly like that. And then we saw Sturkin become that in a short time with New York going 10 and 2. So, those guys, like, they just have some type of teaching over there, I guess, that's a little bit different than over here. Because you see the anticipation factor of goalies from Russia. And it's remarkable um, watching and watching videos to scout some guys from Russia, how good they are at that anticipation. Oh, uh, yeah. Um... Yeah. I, I just can't say enough about him. It's I, I wouldn't be surprised if anybody took him wherever. And if he does fall down, like it, it, it gets to the point where it's like, I don't even care what I need right now. You, gotta, <laughs> you know, it's just like whatever. If if he goes by Buffalo, Buffalo, that'll be insane. Buffalo could that could save like well, it's not going to save the franchise because Buffalo is not going anywhere. But it would actually could actually do something in that organization that could put them on the right path is a goaltender like that. No way uh, that I could see New Jersey picking them up. Probably not Anaheim because they've already got Gibson. It might not even be fair to ask her off to go to a place like that. Uh, heck, Stevie Eisman could do it in number four. He, he could. I think they're, they're huge on Perfetti, but I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but I don't see him getting past Buffalo. I, I really would be shocked if he got past yeah. Buffalo. Especially because if he starts falling too much, you then have him go to teams that it becomes mighty dangerous because you got uh, Pekka in uh, Nashville and then you got Soros who's developing. But if he keeps developing, who says that they won't pick someone like Ashcroft because it saves you money in the long run? You then have great trade ship in UC Soros. And you're going to get a lot of value for him with how he's played. So that helps you actually franchise dynamics wise in the long run, because you're going to get good value and picks that you can add other players at other positions for Soros. So that's you, you it gets really dangerous as it keeps or or the uh, or where you're where you're at Edmonton. Imagine Edmonton, him falling and Edmonton. Uh, if they get him at there, if they have Asker off, because that's their one mi biggest missing link is. Netminder, I mean, Koskinen, I mean, he's playing uh, well, but it's not exactly what you want, I think is the best way to put it, I guess. Like, it's not like I'm not trying to knock the dude. The dude's playing well. And he actually Koskinen? Played, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't but, care. I'm taking him no yeah. matter what. If he's there, I'm taking him. I, I, I don't care who my goaltender is. We'll work on that later. You got a generational goaltender like that. You just don't let him go. I mean, you just can't. Maybe you got to trade your other number one. Let him compete and go from there. It's the most important position in hockey, and I don't really buy this all this stuff that you can get a goaltender. Like people say, well, you can get a goaltender anywhere. Uh, the best goaltender, the, the teams win cup with great goaltenders for sure. You don't have to have one, but if you have one, you increase your odds way, like way, way, way. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if Ottawa, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Ottawa picked up Askarov and then after they took Stutzla, uh, 
Why not? Uh, they don't really have anybody there except for Hogberg, who looks like he's going to be good. But mm-hmm. does he look like he's going to be Askarov? Not really. No, Vasilevsky no. type. And and for a team like Ottawa, who doesn't like to spend a lot of money, one of the best ways you can be competitive is have an, a generational goaltender. Simple as that. I could, exactly. I know one of the teams he was mostly projected to was uh, depending, obviously, what they do in the play-in and if they get in, whether pick-wise, but Chicago, because you got aging Corey Crawford, also his contract's up, but they might extend him because he's a loved fan favorite there, also played very well for all these years, and then he will be his heir, potentially. So he that's a team yes. that would obviously expedite the retooling process immensely, if he goes there, because they have solid talent, if they're able to keep some of them in the fold, uh, and hit, bringing him in automatically expedites your retooling process. Uh, I, I cannot see him getting past Chicago, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Another interesting guy we could talk about that's been all over the board and seems to be flying up quite a bit is Jake Sanderson. Uh, a great player. Yeah, it's there. Uh, they had him as uh, what did Bob Bob McKenzie had him as a Morrissey type player, and uh, that that's a pretty good. I like that. I, I was actually having a hard time putting a pin on what I would call Jake Sanderson, but I think that's a fair assessment. Something of that nature, uh, kind of a kind of a. I mean, his top end would be like a slave end. That would be insane. But he's gonna play. He's a safe pick. He could be a four-five. He could be a one-two. He could be lots of things. But he's been rising up the rankings quite a bit, and he's probably the second best defenseman available. Um, I don't think he gets past New Jersey. I don't think he does either. I mean, he's another guy. You got speed in the two defensemen that are probably going first too, and uh, Sanderson. Um, and of course, uh, Drysdale, you got speed in those guys with their, and then Sanderson, you got the untapped potential. Everything you see from him when you watch videos and you see his uh, ability. I mean, I know he had, I believe it was like 29 points with 22 assists uh, in 48 uh, or 47 games with North Dakota, um, and he uh, he's a guy that just knows how to improve and just hone in his game. He's one of the harder workers you see. And he's a guy that I think has a chance to be at least a Morrissey, who's a hell of a defenseman. If you become a slave, and that's one of the more reliable defensemen in the league right there. You're a guy that you know what you're getting day in, day out. And you know you're getting that at Morrissey. It's just to a notch lesser degree. But if you have a slave and you're getting a great and he's a guy so much on so much on so 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 passing and, 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 and all that too uh, in the USA U18 like he he's a guy that I really think can at least be a Morrissey and then like you said definitely has a chance to be a slave and with potentially a notch because of his offensive potential and speed a bit more offensive point total maybe than slaving over the long hold just because of that but yeah, that would yeah. be interesting I think he could go in a lot of different places. I don't know. Those kind of defensemen are so valuable, and some teams are – they're hard to find. Like, more guys like Morrissey, when they pop up, like when that happened in Winnipeg, when because I, I think it took them by surprise. It, it, there's an intelligence level to be a Slavin or a Morrissey that's just on another plane. Like, Slavin just never makes a mistake, that guy. Uh Jake Muzzins of the world that they're so underappreciated, but not when you play, not when you have them. Uh, I, I, I think I still think Proberoff is going to be underappreciated his whole career, probably, and maybe never get a Vesna, which is way, which is too bad because he will probably deserve one. I would put Proberoff ahead of Slavin as an overall yeah. defenseman, and uh, but. Which tells yeah, you how he probably how won't get worse. What's that? Yeah, Proby probably won't. Well, Proby is a guy that I think could be, and I'm glad you brought him up because actually, with the offensive ability you see of Sanderson and with his size, and he's going to grow at six one, um, one eighty six is what a draft site had him listed as. 
Uh, he's a guy that's a great skating poise defender, uh, offensively minded defender that's going to grow his defense. You're a, he's probably a guy that has a chance because of the defenseman in the league too to quickly get in that underrated pool himself because he's going to do everything well, but he's maybe not going to do something that someone goes, oh my gosh, which is you see with Provorov on occasion, but you don't see enough of people to put enough respect on his name, except for us in the local area, people like you that really examine his game further and don't just look at the points and the just inner analytical stats and only go from, they also go from what you see. I think, that's a perfect guy to bring up because Sanderson has a chance to become a guy that unfortunately has a chance to become underage. He's also a left-handed shot, so uh, that makes sense with uh, Provy uh, to bring up as an underrated uh, comp because Provy is going to stay underrated, and I hope he wins a Norris. And I hope, uh, well, if he goes to the Devils, I don't hope Jake Sanderson wins a Norris. But if he go, yeah. if he go, if he goes to anyone that's not in our, in the Flyers division, I hope he also can win a Norris. So it's it's going to be interesting, but I love the player, and it's going to be great to uh, watch his development um, as he progresses. I just hope he doesn't get picked by the Devils. Yeah, I have a feeling he's not getting past the Devils. With yeah. what they need and everything at that spot, especially on the 11th pick, uh, if they don't go with Askarov, if they like Black, you know, if he's not there, they need defense so bad there in New Jersey, like prospects and roster, everything. It, it, it's where they got to build. And I have, I just can't see them going past that, which would, uh, no, yeah, like you said, not be good. But New Jersey is going to be a solid team, and Philadelphia is going to have to beat that team no matter what. So, uh, but I, I don't think he can get up to Provorov. I just always, and whenever I get a chance to, to pump up Prover off, I will, because he is going to be a guy that needs to be talked about a lot in his career. Uh, you talk about a guy like Hedman. I, I, I think he's may, maybe not on that level yet, but has the potential to get close to that. Like, And he's not that far away. He, he just blows me away at his age to like hardly ever make a mistake already in this league. And the way he rubs people out and how he how he acts and and if Jake Sanderson what i hear has the potential to have that kind of game and uh that's exciting for whoever might pick him in that spot oh yeah yeah the difference is i just wanted to check on it so i got a right for going to say 62 but that would have been one inch off anyway but Provy well, comes in at Provy comes in at 61 well my i don't know it's funny you brought up Hedman cuz my buddy and i were talking about that when nhl.com released the best defense list he's a guy it's so like fun to watch him and it's so remarkable to watch him because he has I think he's six 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 seven like he's so big and he has the speed and all and the off the passing ability he obviously has a great reach because of his size like he's a guy talk about a guy that's a generational talent like Victor Hedman's a rare specimen you don't normally see he's not a guy that you normally see uh let me pull it up yeah six six uh He's not a guy you normally see be able to skate to that ability, be that dynamic in the offensive end, get on his hind tail back to the defensive end. He's one of the best at getting back and grabbing it from you. And like he, he's just a overall B. And I think Provy in time definitely has a chance to get like that because Vic is at a uh, just twenty nine now. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't have, have the, the he doesn't have the size, but in terms of the dynamic player, he has a chance to get like that because he has plenty of time to grow. Because Victor's at uh, twenty nine now, and Provy's only in his early twenty, so you got plenty of time to go. Oh yeah, at his peak, he's going to be amazing. But I, I have a feeling he's going to be undervalued. I don't know if his offense is going to be as high as what a lot of people. It's hard to say. We'll see. A guy like Hedman, I mean, he came in with a lot of clout already. He was number one overall pick, right? So. Uh, everybody knows about that, and thank, and I'm glad Tampa Bay got a guy like him. Uh, it was great for the for the league to have Hedman and Stamkos and all those guys in Tampa, and seeing that uh, success in Florida, it, it, it's it's fantastic. Um, well, my friend, I think oh, there's so many guys we could talk about: Dylan Holloway and Caden Goulet, who I really wanted would like wanted to get into as well. I think he could go. Very high, six three one. He's all he's all over the place too. He he's mm-hmm. another he's another guy. If we're talking about guys that you're seeing 
go all over the place. Uh, he's another defenseman I've seen jump around the fir- late first, uh, earlier first, uh, teens, uh, because he's plays the he already plays the big minutes and obviously has proven to be effective in all areas of the ice. At those big minutes, he's a big body guy at six three already. He's going to grow more. I mean, he's a great guy that has a chance to at least be a great complementary defenseman with great size and skating ability. Uh, so what more do you want? We just talked about a guy. He's not six seven, but like guys that have great size and skating ability and a long reach. Those are players that are hard to find, and Caden Gouley is definitely one of those. Yeah, uh, Caden Gouley and uh, uh, Braden Schneider are kind of in the same pack together. It's questionable who who picks over who. They have similar sort of games. Uh, Gouley is thought of to have more offensive potential. Braden Schneider is more of the defensive defensive type guy. Uh, I've seen them all over the board. I'm not sure. I don't think either one of them gets past Florida, to tell you the honest truth. One of those guys will go with Florida's pick. I'm almost positive about that. Uh, If there's any team that desperately needs uh, defense on their lineup as well as New Jersey, it'd be the Florida Panthers in that spot. Well, my friend, our time is getting, and we could go on forever. And there's going to be a time, you know, there's going to be a time, you know, boys and girls, where we're going to be talking about like this for hours. And we're going to have so many people on because we're going to be, we're working on, we're working on some interesting stuff. Let's just say that. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's definitely sure. That's going to be very exciting. And we'll just leave it at that for now. It's definitely going to be fun and interesting stuff. Yeah, We'll leave it at that. We'll give you little bits and pieces of that as we move on, but it's going to be <laughs> so much fun. We're having a great time. So glad to have you, Joe. And uh, we'll get back into what maybe maybe next week, early next week, we'll get the three of us on uh, steel, steel flyers, you and I, and we'll talk about tons of frolic. I'm sure everybody hit the subscribe button. Go check out Flyers Nitty Gritty. Awesome podcast. And uh, you have a you have a um, Twitter account there, too, don't you there, buddy? Uh, yes, mine is at JJBora26. That's where you can hit me on Twitter. And my buddies and I's podcast is true underscore uh, Philly Sport that my buddy Andrew and I do. So that's and our- you can go to Perlo's NHL POW for my Twitter as well. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.